Warning, if you get called a loser camping, XM4 abuser, no girlfriend having zero recoil weirdo for using this class, I take zero responsibility. <laughs> With all joking aside guys, let's talk about the XM4. Now I see a lot of people making an XM4 class and they make it depending on how they want to use it. They make it like an SMG, they make it like an AR, but no one actually mixes the two together and makes it as a very laser accurate, overpowered gun that works in every single situation. Now I wanted to make a class and I realized that a very basic one is actually the best class to use for this gun. I think this is the best XM4 class I've ever made. I've tried out so many of them and this one is definitely the best. The recoil on this gun should never look non-existent but I do abuse this class and no matter what it is unfair but it is what it is and I like to use it. Now I'm going to share you guys all the attachments for this class as well to get zero recoil and to be dominant at every single range. It's crazy. You guys want to use it. Now let's go for uh, I don't know let's say 2,500 likes on this video right here. That would be actually a good like goal and I don't know man and just make sure that you guys use this class. It's crazy. It works in all distances. Let's get right into it. What is up guys? My name is Nick and today we'll be looking at the XM4 class. Now I always say I always die to people who use classes that seem to melt me and I always try to make classes better than theirs without using the meta weapons and at the moment the XM4 definitely is not the meta but it is really really good and it could stand its ground against those. So I tried every single XM4 class possible. I tried them for close range, it didn't work. I tried them for long range, it didn't work. I tried them for close range, long range and mid range and that's what we got right here and it definitely works and it, it literally is the only class that I recommend using for the XM4. Then I thought, why not just give this gun zero recoil as well? And I did that, and this gun is a beast, whether you're on console or PC. So we're gonna look at it, it's dominant at every distance, and we're gonna get into it. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the actual, uh, I'd say let's go on to the perks and stuff like that that I'm using for this class, because it might not seem important, but it is pretty important at the same time, because you wanna make sure that you're using the right perks. And I have to say right here, Perk number one, quick fix. Quick fix, killing players immediately starts health regeneration. Like, why wouldn't you want this? Especially if you're not playing solos, if you're playing anything but solos, you wanna have this. If you kill someone and you have no armor plates on, you're gonna be at like one health if the dude gets you all the way down to that. Then the next dude's gonna come into the gunfight. You're one shot, so why not have quick fix on? The second you kill someone, you're back to like 100 health again, and it's really, really good. So I would definitely go ahead and use that. After that, perk number two, we're gonna run overkill because I do have a secondary with this class. It's not the only gun I use in case you run out of ammo you got to switch you guys know what it is but if i didn't i would definitely say make sure to throw on ghost because like, yeah that, that's it that's what you need in warzone perk number three i like tracker tracker is nice because a lot of people tend to run away when they're in tight situations and you could just easily follow those footsteps and get to where they are before them and it's fun it's just like dude tracker is definitely something you want to use now let's talk about the lethals and tacticals i always say the, the heartbeat sensor is good, but the later you get into the match, the more useless it gets. A lot of people start being hidden from it. A lot of people are playing more cautious. So it is nice to have, but I always throw on either a flash or a stun grenade. I feel like the flash only works in buildings and stuff. Stun grenade's nice because you're stunned. You ain't moving. You ain't getting out of that. And for the lethal, I like to run the thermites because you could stick people and easily knock them without doing any work and they can't get away from it. And also you could close off doorways for a few seconds by putting a fire there. People are too scared to run through it. It's nice to have. But let's talk about the XM4 right here. So I am using a variant on this one, but I don't think I'm using many of the, the attachments that actually come with the variant, so that doesn't really matter, but you will need to get this gun fully leveled up. Like if you don't have it fully leveled up, you're not gonna be able to utilize the class like su super much. Now I'm gonna say, there's gonna be attachments that I definitely tell you guys to use. You could change them up and I'll give you guys options to change these up as well, but I'm gonna tell you some attachments that you definitely don't want to use that I see people running with this as well. So I'll share those with you guys as we go on here. So the first thing to run on this class is the muzzle agency suppressor. Now this one should be a basic. This should be like on every single person's class. You don't want to use this gun and not throw on this attachment. I mean, any gun in the game should be using the agency suppressor and it's really good. You got vertical recoil control. You get sound suppression, bullet velocity, and effective damage range. And I'm gonna explain something here because some people just don't understand bullet velocity too much. It's pretty much how when you shoot those shots at people, you know how they go in the air and they stay in the air a bit and then they hit someone? Well, the more bullet velocity you have, the more the gun feels like hit scan, the, the less travel time the bullet spends in the air. So you could be shooting at someone and you don't have to lead your shots as much, the more bullet velocity you have on a weapon, which is really good because you don't have to think, dude, this guy's 150 meters away, where do I have to shoot in order to hit him? 
the more bullet velocity you have, the more you just have to aim on his body and the shots are going to hit him even at those ranges. Now the vertical recoil control and effective damage range is nice and that's what I really like about having that right there. Now let's move on to the actual barrel and I'm going to recommend one and then I'm going to say that there's one that you should definitely not use and I see a lot of people actually using. So the first one is the 13.5 inch task force. This one I recommend. Even though it got nerfed, it's still really good. You got bullet velocity, horizontal and vertical recoil control which is really going to help this gun feel like a laser and you get effective damage range as well. Now I see people saying since the task force ended up getting nerfed, why not run the 13.5 inch reinforced heavy? Now it's good. You get vertical, uh, horizontal recoil control, bullet velocity, effective damage range and you do lose sprint, moving speed, aim down sights, whatever, all that kind of stuff but you lose much less of it. Now the difference here is even though the task force got nerfed, it's still better than the reinforced heavy. A lot of people just don't believe that, but it actually does perform a little better than that one there. So yeah, you are losing a little bit of ADS and sprinting move speed and all that, but it's not much. Like it's really not much. It's not much to say, use the reinforced heavy over it. So just make sure when you guys are using a barrel, I would only recommend either using the 13.7 inch takedown or the 13.5 inch task force. And that's all I'm using right here. And they do great. And this gun is definitely still a laser and definitely still has long distance advantage against a lot of weapons. Now, the optic is going to be the Microflex LED. You could definitely go ahead and use the actual arms three times, but the reason I'm not doing that right here is because this gun I want to use for close range as well. It is dominant in close range as well, unless you're going up against like the MAC-10 or something, but besides that, it's still really good. So the actual three times, once you get into close quarter fights, it, it kind of messes you up a little more than it should because it's a three times zoom. So definitely just run the Microflex LED. You could still shoot people at distance you don't have to worry about that and yeah you don't it's it's just good it's good in all ranges if you use the microflex led with it now the under barrel this is one that i really recommend now some people might not want to run it because you already got a lot of recoil control with this gun but if you want to keep it steady and not moving whatsoever like pretty much zero recoil this is the one you want to throw on it's the field agent grip you get horizontal and vertical recoil control and you just lose some firing move speed and ads firing move speed so you're not losing too much with that right there so i definitely recommend recommend having that on and for the ammunition you want to run the salvo 60 round fast mags now there is a problem with that there is there is an issue when you run this you lose a lot of ads and if you're trying to use this gun for close range it might not be worth it but you also lose ads with the stand like 60 round mags and we need to have 60 rounds on this weapon so it's either either one of those two you got to use but at least this one here yeah you lose a little bit more ads but you do get reload quickness so with the stand like 60 round mags you lose ads and you lose reload quickness so that's just not worth it in my opinion now there's another attachment that i won't recommend using and a lot of people try to use the rear grip and stuff and i mean yeah they're good they're definitely nice the airborne elastic wrap is nice but you lose sprint to fire time and that's something i would never recommend losing on a gun i mean if you got it you lose it once okay sure but it's not something that i like losing if you lose sprint to fire time there's going to be a lot of gunfights where you end up shooting second which i guess at the end of the day doesn't really matter because it seems like whoever shoots second in warzone wins the gunfight anyways i mean i shoot first all the time and die all the time but yeah i mean just try not to use it though regardless you don't want to go ahead and do that and an attachment that i would recommend if you don't feel like running a barrel or you don't feel like running the optic definitely use a laser they're actually really good a lot of people don't think that but you could use the ember sighting point which is really nice or you could use the sof target designator which gives you effective damage range and hip fire accuracy as well as the ember sighting point but the ember sighting point you lose sprint to fire so you might not want to do that the sof target designator you don't lose sprint to fire the only negative is the fact that your laser is visible to enemies which is nothing bad whatsoever it's not even like a laser it's just like a little small flashlight that barely lights up and you get that effective damage range which is really good and hip fire accuracy to help you up close so if you ever wanted to use those definitely throw on one of those lasers because it's really not a bad option at all you could definitely take off the barrel or take off the optic and throw on a laser instead so that's it man that is my xm4 class i hope you guys do like it because it's, it's really a good gun a lot of people don't like they they bash it they don't give it a chance i say give the xm4 a chance it is definitely one of the better guns in the game especially if you're using a gun for all around ranges close range mid range long range it's what you want to use it, it's really it's not bad whatsoever another one i would say is the m4a1 from modern warfare that gun as well seems to be really good 
at all ranges. It's just crazy how some guns work at all ranges, some of them just suck up close and are made for just so far. But right now the Farah, the Farah 83 seems to be being used a lot. It's not a bad option, but this gun could definitely handle its own against that. Now if you're shooting first with the Farah, maybe that gun will dominate this one, but it's gonna get nerfed eventually. The XM4 definitely won't get nerfed again. Hopefully, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm not wrong, I should say. I, I, I hope it doesn't get nerfed, but that's it, man. If you guys did like the video, like I said, let's go for 2,500 likes. If you made it this far into the video, comment xm4 gang down in the comments below thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe to the channel with those noties turned on my name is nick and i'll catch you in the next one peace